What's good everyone, welcome back. Today is a lifestyle vlog. We're gonna do some watches and some custom suits. Ryan, why don't you talk about that first? Okay, well, um, this whole journey kind of started a few months ago, almost a year ago, I think. Obviously, I have that whole lifestyle, the beach and vans and t-shirts and yep. all that stuff, right? But you can only show up to so many meetings underdressed before people start giving you this you know, sideway eye, right? We have a very good friend, Henry, who is uh, the godfather to my son. Always decked out, head to toe, nice suits. And you know, one day I just looked at him and I was like, oh dude, who dresses you? You know? <laughs> I was like, if they can make you look that good, they're gonna make <laughs> you look fucking dope, right? And then he introduced me to Willie and uh, the anthology. When I came, the first thing I realized was, yo, I'm way over my head here. Like, there's so many things about suits that I didn't even know. You know what I'm saying? Like different shoulder types, different lapels, how they stitch the lapel. I mean, I feel like today's episode is going to be the same with the watches because the person we have here probably knows far more about this than we do, right? That's when you know somebody's really got passion, you know, kind of like, you know, us with cars, right? Yeah. Um, you know, just like what he was saying, I think in the journey of suits, you know, you start off with the brand names. Ready to wear stuff. Ready to wear yeah. stuff. And then you kind of venture into, you know, the custom tailoring stuff like the anthology. And this is why I brought Chris the other day. He direly needs help. I mean, you know, he, yeah. so like just, he has a, very he's casual. wearing Chong Lian for shorts, dude. <laughs> you know, okay, besides the <laughs> fact that, <laughs> yeah, besides the fact that he's wearing Chong Lian for shorts. <laughs> but this kind of goes into what I wanted to talk about today. Independent watchmakers, independent watch brands. The anthology, in a way, is an independent suit maker. Yeah, look at this guy. He's really well dressed. Okay, <laughs> so all your suits are basically bespoke. Yes. Okay, but you guys also have ready to wear. I'm ready to wear and match measure. Well, yeah, all these guys here, man, they really know their stuff. So if you guys want a real nice bespoke suit, come check out the anthology, all right? Today, we are going to introduce one of the most prominent independent watch collectors in Taiwan right now, and his collection is growing. He's already here. He just doesn't yeah. want to be on camera. No, we're so, not going to put him on camera okay. as much as we want to. But yeah, let's let's talk about why you know someone would get into an independent watch, or how did you get into it? Like you said, uh, went around the whole charade of all the uh, mainstream brands, and after a while, I just wanted something different. And uh, I'm pretty sure that's where you're headed to right now. And I just brought some pieces to show you, and um, I hope you like them. I know nothing about this stuff. Please, guys, uh, <laughs> educate me. Well, I don't know as much as Jordan, and I, I don't know about Chris. I know Chris is into a lot of independent watches as well. well. I'm still going through all the phases where you have been through already. This is something, this is like a new land for me. Yeah, but yeah. this is, it's just very interesting. So I did pick up my very first truly independent watch brand, which is the Orwork UR100 Space Time. This is the uh, the one that they call kind of like what they have in the Star Wars, the gold guy. Um, C3PO. C3PO. This is the nickname. It actually tells how far the Earth rotates, yes. the distance of how far the Earth rotates every 20 minutes. So on the left and the right side, you can see that. But if you want to tell the time, it's just on the bottom. I know it's totally useless, but it's so cool. <laughs> right? It's just so Definitely, cool. Yeah. yeah. So I noticed that you have a couple of works too. Yes. Did you get Orworks works first over the MBNFs or which one did you kind of go first? So I went to the MBMS first, then the Orworks. Yeah. You have also have a, uh, this is the Titanium oh, UI100. Yes. yes. Right? With the integrated bracelet. This looks really cool. Your work, if you're listening and if you're watching, please make a rose gold version. I, I would buy that right away. I want the rose gold version. Please, please. So please. are these torbulons? What, 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 are, what are these? These are not torbulons. So those are actually, they have a balance wheel. So that's on top of the dial. See, I know nothing about these. Okay, so usually the balance wheel is placed in the bottom or within somewhere, but I guess MBNF and uh, Max Booser and his watchmakers came up with something that put it on the outside and directly in the middle. Yes. Right? This is pretty to look at, right? So this is the OG. Yes, that's the LM101. LM101. So what does LM stand for? Uh, Legacy Machines. Legacy Machines. So they have abbreviations for everything. This is rose gold, blue dial. So yeah, this size is actually pretty good size. What's cool is kind of like there's like a big dome. If you look at it. Mm -hmm. But okay, so I'm assuming that you got that first and then you got this. So actually this came, came before that. Oh, so, this came before this? Yep, yeah, so there's like a year's waiting list. Okay, oh. so this is the SE. Yes. 
the so split escapement. Yes, Evo. <laughs> Evo. Uh, the difference between the Evo and the, the non-Evo, what do you yes. call this? The, so the Evo's uh, in a bigger case size. The bigger case size and it also uses the rubber strap. Yes. This one is a Evo as well, right? Yes, this perpetual, is also a Perpetual yes. calendar. Perpetual yeah. calendar. This is kind of like the grail. This is the perpetual calendar. This is the perpetual. This is open worked. That is just gorgeous. I, I really like the perpetual calendar and BNFs because I feel like it's one of the most beautiful perpetual calendars on the market right now. But um, I think I think this one is the sickest one from here, right? From the design. Yeah, that, that's a trip. Look at yeah, that. Yeah, that, that's a spaceship looking the bulldog. Thing. And I, I, that's I, I, called I the like, bulldog. Uh, yeah. I like the little engraving in the back. It says, uh, disregard the dog, beware of the owner or something. <laughs> Does it? Does it say that? Yeah. Really? Forget the dog, beware of the owner. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of cool. Um, and then the mouth here. So, which one was the last piece that you got from MBNF? This one or the Bulldog? So the Bulldog was actually the latest. The latest edition. edition. Yes. This is a very expensive piece. Do you and mind telling me how much I I have? Because I have no concept. Of oh, so that's a bit of over a five million NTD. One hundred seventy thousand yeah. USD. Yes. MSRP. Yes, MSRP. So one of the most prominent watchmakers with MBNF is Stephen McDonald. Yes. And uh, Stephen McDonald was the one that came up with. The uh, Perpetual. Okay, so he came up with the Perpetual. Yes. The Bulldog was um, from Max. So we recently met Max at uh, one of the independent watch exhibits. Mm -hmm. uh, he came to Taiwan. Really cool guy, super knowledgeable, loves telling stories. Max, what's up? Uh, yeah, these are growing on me, like a lot. These are definitely growing on me a lot. But they're your works. They're also very cool, very futuristic, but they have a totally different design cue, totally different image. Do you like these more or those more? Yeah, I think those are a little dressier. These are a little bit more uh, sportier. Right. Right. Um, that's just from a novice's uh, point of view, right? Yeah. So this one is the UR120. Yes. Okay, so this is your recent pickup. Uh, yes. Yeah, this is the one I wore at the event. Uh, yeah, this is the one that was uh, on my wrist. Uh, I wish they gave it to me, but it's actually quite expensive. How much is this? So this is about 130,000 uh, USDs. Anything special about the way that this watch works? So actually the dial is it's very different to how we use to tell time. So if you look at the dial, it's um, first glance. Rotates. Like yeah, it way. rotates. Oh, oh, check this out. This is actually pretty cool. You see how the numbers twist and then they come, they come together? So how do you read it? So you read it here. So let's say this is 615. Mm. You see that? And then it switches and then the seven comes around. Yeah. But then when this rotates over there, the numbers rotate as well. I know that the production numbers are very low on all these watches, right? MBMF is below 400 and um, Auric is below 300, I believe. Across so, all watches? Across, across all watches. Yep. You know, so I guess hence the MSRP. That's like 30 watches a month. Yes. Yeah. Yep. That's actually kind of cool. So tell me about these watches as uh, investments. The reason why I got into them was because um, it's the first time where people look at these watches not as investment pieces, but Interesting. it's more out of love. So when yeah. you buy one of these pieces, you, you have to it. have love. I mean, in the future, if it goes up in value, that's a perk. But uh, when I bought them in the beginning, it was genuine passion. It's very cool. Yeah. This goes back into what we were saying about cars and suits in a way. I guess you go through this path and this journey takes you to a certain point where you really want to find what you love and what truly belongs to you and what sets you different from everyone else. Like you have your own style, you know, when you wear this suit, you feel happy. You feel powerful. Yeah. Right? You feel good. Yeah. The Make suit, it the man. <laughs> I agree with that. You know? That's what and they then, say, right? But I think that's the thing with watches too. Once you start to appreciate watches, once you start to learn about all the different watches, you kind of find your own way. You kind of figure out what really belong to you or what you belong to. And what it says about you. What it says about right? you. I think that's a very important. Yeah. Even the car that we drive, right? All these things, they speak volumes to people before you even open your mouth. Exactly. We yeah. are a aesthetic world, you know, yeah. we do look at things for face value, right? That's kind of the first impression of us, right? These things are very good representatives, including the clothes of the car and you know, whatnot, right? Yeah, I think you said that really well. But we have one more watch today that I really wanted to get on EWC. I guess you're the first in Taiwan. Probably. You're the first in Asia, probably. <laughs> probably, yes. Yeah, right? Why don't you open it up and you know, we'll just get your hand in it then. <laughs> Wow. Okay. So this is the, am I, I don't know if I'm saying it right. Excuse my English. Debithune? Yes. Debithune. 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 Say it. Say it. Debithune. 
<laughs> German. How Debitur. would you say it in German? I think Debutun. 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 Is it German? No, it's not. Where's no, it from? It's, it's Swiss, right? I think it's Swiss. 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 Um, okay, so I know that this is not the only face, the only dial. Uh, I don't want to mess it up. It's an expensive watch. Can I? How do I twist it? How do I turn it? You can go for it. You don't have to. You can just, really just, turn yes, it? Yeah, I can just, just turn, turn it? it? Yeah. Ooh, that's the tourbillon. This is the tourbillon. Also, it's actually a balance wheel. But oh, that's a balance like, wheel. It looks like, like oh, it's also okay. a balance wheel. I'm wrong. Yes. That is really cool. So can you can you tell me a little bit about this watch? Because I don't know anything about it. So this was released <laughs> last year, and it's called the uh, Kind of Two a GMT watch. Okay. So on one side, it has a... GMT. Uh, yes. And cool. on the other side, you can see the full open work, and you can just see the incredible detail and the finishing that they do on the watch, and it's impeccable. I'm assuming Jordan won't be having to drop this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, may I ask how much this is? It'll probably be around 260,000 USD, if you can buy one. one. If you can find one. Debutune is one of the independent watchmakers that are quite popular, just like MBNF, Woolwork, Moser. Debutune, they've got their own style with this, kind of like this, I want to say shield or spaceship looking spaceship. thing. Like, yes. what, what is that? But I see it on a lot of their watches. Yes. And if you look at it from the side, on the lugs, you can see that it's, it'll taper to your hand. So that's, yeah. that's Oh, so it also tells time on this side. Yes. So it's like dual. Oh, okay. It's not yeah. just like for show. No, this is completely functional, both sides. It's very sexy. Like, probably one divided by two, because you're getting two watches, actually. <laughs> yeah. So what material is this? This is in titanium. This is in titanium. Oh, titanium. The production numbers of their whole entire catalog is probably just still a couple hundred a year as well. 200, maybe. 200, yes. yeah. Oh, but this is so sick. Congratulations. Thank and, you. Uh, thank you for showing us this incredible watch. Um, I just wanted to make a vlog to show everyone that although I still love PP, I still love Rolex, there are other watches that are on the market. There's a ton of independent watch brands that you guys could venture into. But yes, independent watch brands, they are a little more expensive. So that's why a lot of the collectors of the big watch brands, they kind of venture into the indies later on. But yeah, we appreciate that you come on. Maybe next time you'll decide to show your face. Guys, if you want to give Jordan and Veronica a follow, their IG handle is right here. Uh, and uh, yeah, we thank you guys and wanted to thank Willie. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed this lifestyle vlog, talking suits, watches, and what we thought about everything. And we'll see you guys very soon. Peace out. Peace out.